Welcome everyone, glad to have you worshiping with us today. Our prelude today is being done by Mood Swing, who are here to make music for us today on this Jazz Sunday. So thank them for coming and thank all of you for coming, so let us worship God. Thank you very much. We welcome Mood Swing today as our jazz guest. This is Jazz Sunday, the Sunday before the start of Lent on Ash Wednesday, and Fat Tuesday is coming. And so we have a tradition here of having uh, our Jazz Sunday today. And so we welcome them as our musical guests. And if you would, please sign the pew registers at this time. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We're pleased to have all of you, whether in person or on the recording today. So thank you all for joining us. We have uh, the usual announcements down there, and for the sake of the online audience that doesn't have this before them, let me uh, quickly go through some of it. Uh, we have Facebook update. Uh, some of you, I think, have uh, signed up. Very good. So we still need some more Facebook uh, sign-ups, so please do that if you're on Facebook for us. And Ash Wednesday is uh, at noon this week. Um, weather permitting, we shall see. <laughs> uh, it seems like we're in a uh, pattern of every midweek now, having something happen. So anyway, if you can make it, uh, we'll gather here at noon on Wednesday. We're having our teaching Seder with Rabbi Susan coming up April 2nd. Uh, we still are gathering delegates for the annual meeting in uh, Texas, El Paso, and we can have uh, hybrid uh, attendees, so if you want to just join by Zoom on the Saturday of that week, please let us know. We have five delegates possible. Nitwits is reviving, so I think we already have some sign up, so please put your name down if you're interested. New members, I'm getting a lot of attention for that, so if you're interested in joining, see me. It'll be on Easter Sunday. 
And on the back, we have uh, the first mention of our date for eight, nine, and dine. These are done by churches where we all gather together. Uh, we're assigned to a certain house, a host, and then people gather at that particular house to get to know each other. So if you want to take part in that, please sign up next door. Uh, this month, our mission project is Prescott Area Shelter Services, which is our women and children's uh, shelter in town. They do a wonderful job, a wonderful ministry, and so please support that. And then at the bottom, we've got our new image of the church, which is uh, very cheery looking and kind of gets across the message of who we are there uh, on the image. All right, those are the announcements I wanted to share. Let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
you so much. That was fabulous. Um, let us continue our worship with the call to worship. We hear your challenge, O oh God, and your call. Come, says the Lord. Come up to the holy mountain. We are assembled in this sanctuary, this holy place. Meet us here, away from the distractions of the world. Come, says the Lord. Come up to the holy mountain. You have shown yourself to be a forgiving God. Therefore, we exalt your name. Yes, O oh God, we will come with excitement and anticipation to your holy mountain. Come, receive instruction in holiness, righteousness, compassion, and peace. Come, regain insight to see the least among you, those whose rights have been trampled upon. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive your word. Anoint us as your priests to those who live on the margins, the outcasts, the lonely, the ignored. Come, says the Lord, come up to the holy mountain. I am the sovereign and holy one. Come, let us worship God. Feel free to join us in the singing of Amazing Grace. If you have up in your hymn, and also we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 6. Thank you very much for that. Well, we always have a children's time during our service, and uh, I have a couple friends that enjoy me, uh, join me every week by the name of JJ and Ziggy. And so JJ has asked me to bring his ukulele today for some reason, so I've got to find out what he's up to. So let me come down here and JJ, um, I brought your ukulele. Now, what do you have in mind? I want to join Mood Swing. <laughs> Would, would you happen to have room for me in the band? Oh. <laughs> Are you going to play something for us? No. <laughs> well, I wanted to have someone bring a musical instrument today because I wanted us to celebrate the gift of music. How many of you play instruments? I play piano. 
you play a piano? Wow. And everybody seems to play something. So music is God's gift to us, and so we like to celebrate it. And there's kind of all kinds of different kinds of music. And so one of the kinds is jazz, which we have today. And there's classical, and there's rhythm and blues, there's gospel, there's rock, there's hip-hop, there's all kinds of music. And so we think of all of them as kind of God's gift to us. Because what does music do for us? What, what, do we, what do we get out of music? <laughs> Makes you feel good, huh? And it, it kind of, uh, yes, it make, gets into your emotions and makes you feel really good. And it kind of uh, reminds us of God's love and grace, and we celebrate it with God. So I wanted all of you to not only hear some of the music today, but to know that you can learn music instruments, as you're already doing. And someday, maybe you'll be up here. You can play for us. That'd be fun. So uh, thank you all for being here. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this chance to hear music today, to celebrate it. We do celebrate our boys and girls. We ask your blessings on them and be with them throughout this day. Through Christ we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Something tells me I need to get this back to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you want, yeah. <laughs> Holy God, with every dawn you beckon us, calling us to welcome each new day as a story to be lived. But today brings with it uncertainty and challenges, and we are hesitant to step forward into a story unknown. Instead, we prefer to cling to the old chapters, choosing the easy pathway, wandering down safe lanes, and missing holy moments. But in those moments when we give in, step forward in faith to embrace your way, you are there with blessing beyond measure. Loving God, help us to surrender to your spirit. Take the leap of faith that propels us into the heart of life and live into the faithful story of Jesus. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There, Jesus was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead.
I invite your attention to the bulletin insert. Uh, I've done this uh, several times, I think the last time, maybe four or five years ago, where I did some study on jazz and theology, and actually at the Yale Institute of Sacred Music, I found this article, of all things, on jazz and religion. And so what the author did in the article is try to compare the elements of jazz to the elements of religion. And religion didn't come out too good. So, uh, <laughs> so the creativity of jazz becomes rigidity in the church, improvisation becomes repression, communication becomes self-absorbed internalizing, and vulnerability becomes safety and dullness. So let me go through each of those just briefly. We have a creative God, and jazz is certainly a creative medium. Uh, it can just create new things really on the spot as improvising happens. And so a very creative kind of music. And we have a creative God. We're presented with, in the scripture, a God who is able to not only create, but to bring forth new things that are very helpful to us and to alter things as needed. And the church kind of missed that message, and they became a very rigid kind of institution. And the view of God became very rigid as well. I remember uh, years ago when I was being thoroughly trained in the old guise of Europe theology. Uh, you know, God was immutable. God never changed. God didn't change God's mind. And that's what I thought. And I actually had a book back then that was called Decision Making and the Will of God. And the will of God was presented as a circle, a small circle on a board that you had to try to hit. And if you didn't quite do it, you flubbed up, you know, you messed up, you were in the permissive will of God. You had missed the perfect will of God, and now you're in the permissive will of God. Actual book that I had, Decision Making and the Will of God. So I grew up with that, and I thought, well, gee, the first mistake you made, I guess you're done. You know, you've, you've lost out on, now you're in the permissive will of God, and you're just kind of not what you could have been. And so that's what was being taught. Uh, and so the creativity of God was kind of squelched, and the rigidity of God came forth, and we were expected to think that God couldn't get creative with us. God had to just, you know, have one way, and that's it, or we either did it or we didn't. And so in this article, they talk about how this creative God was taken by the church and made into a rigid God. Jazz helps us to recover from that because jazz is creative. And then improvisation became repression. The God that's presented to us in the Hebrew scriptures and in Jesus' ministry is a God who can have emotion, who can decide to change God's mind. Matter of fact, you remember the story of Adam and Lot. He tried to save Lot and he he bargained God down to 10 good people, if he could find 10. But he started at 50. And so each time God would say, okay. And then you get to the story of Jonah, where Jonah wishes for the city of Nineveh to be destroyed. And God actually changes God's mind. And the whole story of the book of Jonah is of Jonah being really mad that God changed God's mind and wanted to save those people. Uh, so we're given all of these stories in Scripture of a God who's able to improvise, uh, to try new things, uh, to struggle with us. And yes, a God who sometimes gets exasperated with us, <laughs> sometimes is thrilled with joy, sometimes is not happy. All these things are presented to us as the God of Scripture, but we have taken that God and made God into a repressive God not wanting us to be who we were created to be, but to fit into little pigeonholes that humans want us to fit into. Whether we're talking about gender, gender identity, all kinds of ways that even now people are told they have to be a certain way, 
even though we seem to have presented to us a plethora of ways of being that seem to come from the Creator, uh, but yet they're squelched by the church. And so we've taken this God who can be improvisational and turn God into this uh, very repressive kind of God that would not seek for our happiness, but try to get us to follow in the line of whoever the person is that's trying to make the rules for all of us. And so jazz is very improvisational, as you know, and uh, it's a good reminder to us that uh, God does improvise. God's able to uh, change. As a matter of fact, uh, the old, uh, again, European male theologians taught me that uh, you know, God can only be one way. Uh, God has a way that God does things, and that's just the way it is. And then process theology came along uh, and taught us this. Maybe God is creative in the sense that God is always bringing forth new things. And when we think about that will of God illustration I gave, that if you miss the dot, you're done, this theology says that each time you make a decision, a whole new set of opportunities opens up before you. If it's a bad decision you make, a whole new set of opportunities comes up before you, and you can choose to come back to the good. And it makes God into a much more powerful God because God can deal with all of that and continue to create these opportunities before us so that we change. And God allows those changes to happen before us. And so this God of improvising becomes repression in the church. And then communication becomes self-absorbed internalizing. Did you see the Super Bowl ad, uh, Jesus Gets Us? Remember that one? It's a great illustration of the uh, self-absorbed kind of Christianity that would suggest that, you know, Jesus gets us, Jesus is with us, Jesus and me kind of theology. And so when I thought, saw that, I thought, uh, maybe they should do one on, do we really get Jesus? Uh, <laughs> do we take care of the widow, the orphan, the alien, uh, the marginalized? Do we care about those who are not uh, in the in crowd, who are not part of uh, what society would say is the right people? And so it's a good illustration of how the church through the years has taken what uh, should be communication, what should be a way to communicate with each other in the world, and turned it into this self-absorbed internalizing where it's just me and God, and Jesus gets me. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus will give me a parking spot today. It's great. <laughs> And we've sort of messed it all up. Uh, we should be trying to go where Jesus is. Um, I don't know if you saw the front page of today's paper. Uh, there's an article there about uh, Pastor Kendra. How many of you have seen your paper yet today? Yeah, so Pastor Kendra has been here actually like a month or two ago and helped us do another event uh, trying to understand uh, racial uh, issues. And uh, several years ago, we actually had a joint meeting with the Dewey uh, African American Church, and it was here in Perkins Hall with about 100 people. And let me give you the background of that. Uh, back then, a politician down in uh, Phoenix who represented this area decided to say something that was uh, sort of racist. And at that point, the uh, NAACP leaders started to say, you know, maybe we should boycott Prescott. And so having heard that, I thought, you know what, we should host an event here to show that Prescott truly is everybody's hometown. And so we had the NAACP leaders come up from Phoenix. Mayor was here representing the city, which certainly didn't want to be shut down from uh, anybody coming to visit us. And so we all gathered in here with about 100 people and had this meeting where we communicated with each other and tried to suggest that, you know, Prescott is for everyone. And so we helped to do that. And so 
The reason that happened is we weren't just in here with Jesus and me and celebrating ourselves, but we want to communicate Jesus to the community and who Jesus truly is to everyone. And so this communication can become self-absorbed internalizing if we're not careful. And finally, vulnerability becomes safety and dullness. Jazz musicians are very vulnerable. They have to trust each other as they sing. Uh, as a matter of fact, that quote from Reverend Bill Carter is a really good one. Uh, you know, you, you take enormous risk as you play. You work hard to lift the music from the page and release it into the air. Yet there's always a safety net of grace. If a musician hits a sour note or flubs a rhythm, it cannot be replaced, only forgiven. There will be another opportunity to play better notes on another day. It sounds very much like uh, Christian theology. But all of us have to become vulnerable in our lives in a lot of different ways and risk or else we become safe and dull. A lot of churches become safe and dull places because there's no vulnerability there. There's no ability to try something new or be different. The seven last words of the church, we never did it that way before. It's very well known to all of us. And so on this day, I thought I would give you an illustration of vulnerability that happened in this sanctuary on Christmas Eve in 2016. Remember that Christmas Eve? We had, uh, you know, I read one place that was seven inches of snow, another a foot of snow. So we're trying to gather here on Christmas Eve and have our usual service. And needless to say, because of the snowstorm, there are different ideas of how many we had. It might have been 10, might have been 20. <laughs> it wasn't that many people. Uh, and so we gathered, and uh, I didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't have any music. And today is Reverend Harry Strong's 80th birthday. Remember Harry and Anna? They just moved to uh, Colorado a couple years ago before COVID really got going. Uh, Reverend Harry and Anna were here, and Mary and John were here uh, as their guests, and, uh, you know, 10 or 20 of us other people. And I said, what are we going to do for music? And Harry had never mentioned that he could play the piano, never. And uh, he probably didn't think he could that well. And, and so he said, well, I'll play the piano. And Anna said, I'll sing. And so it was the most, uh, it's one of those experiences that's just kind of special where it didn't go as you thought it would, but it ended up being a, a tremendous gathering because we had people who walked down here, never been in here, but they saw the door and they said, okay, maybe they're having a service. And so we had, you know, just people from the community and uh, Harry became very vulnerable to playing the piano and he did it. And so I want to acknowledge him on this, his happy 80th birthday and thank him for doing that. And uh, it's a wonderful memory that I have. And so creativity becomes rigidity, improvisation becomes repression Communication becomes self-absorbed, internalizing, and vulnerability becomes safety and dullness. Unless we jazz it up. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. So thank you, Mood Swing, for being here with us today, and uh, I'll turn it over to you.
Thank you very much uh, for sharing that with us and for that illustration of vulnerability and <laughs> improvisation. <You're welcome>. <laughs> 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 We never make any mistakes here. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to make sure I, I shared this quote that's in the uh, insert because uh, on this day where we are celebrating music and uh, God's gift of music to us, this Rollo May quote really intrigues me. Um, he says, in our day of dedication to facts and hard-headed objectivity, we have disparaged imagination. What if imagination and art are not frosting at all, but the fountainhead of human experience? Interesting. Maybe that would revive all the art programs in schools around the country if they thought about that. But yeah, um, the fountainhead of, of our experience, imagination and art. We come to our morning prayer time and a number of requests to share with you, and you all bring with you a lot of things that are on your hearts and minds to share with God in silence also. We continue to pray for the Turkey-Syria sad situation, so many deaths. Uh, pray for those people there and, of course, the people of Ukraine other parts of our world that we don't get to hear much about, but a lot uh, of suffering around our globe. I guess pray for all the organizations that are trying to do their best all around the world to bring help and hope and change to our globe. We continue to pray for Kathy, for Jan, for Reverend Ralph, for Sue, for Dina, for Wendy, we pray for Reverend Harry today on his birthday and Anna and wish them well in their new life there in Colorado. And you all bring with you a lot on your mind and heart, and so let us go before the Lord and pray together. Oh God, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate the gift of music, how it has impacted us and continues to, to speak to us and to move us. And so for all who have developed that gift, we give thanks. We give thanks for these members of Mood Swing being with us here today, sharing their gifts with our congregation. And we lift up to you these that I have mentioned for prayer for our world where so many suffer. We do pray that peace and justice would come to this planet. Thank you for all who are trying to make a difference working against the grain in many instances. Uh, give them your encouragement, your help. Uh, we do pray for the people of Syria and Turkey and Ukraine and other places on our planet. We lift up to you today those that I've mentioned for uh, Kathy, for Jan, for Reverend Ralph, for Sood, for Wendy, uh, for others that we bring with us today who need you as the great physician to bring healing for them and hope and encouragement and as so many have commented through the years they can feel the prayers of God's people and they can feel the presence and power of God upholding them through very difficult times and so we ask that today for all of them and now for our own requests that we bring today we lift them up to you there are unspoken requests in our midst today. You know each situation, and so we pray that uh, you would be at work uh, through everything that happens, that it might happen for a reason, to bring about through your creative power good. And thank you that we're reminded today that uh, often the God that is presented to us by preachers and churches and denominations is perhaps not the God of scripture, perhaps not the true God. And so help us to correct our image of God as needed, uh, to find you to be creative, improvisational, and one who meets us where we are and seeks to bring about change for us. We ask this all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our morning offering, and uh, I realized I left the doxology in, and uh, I um, thought it was maybe a mistake, but maybe it was left in there so I would sing the doxology this morning, <laughs> but I've been, in a, I've been asked not to do that today, so... So we're going to take up the offering and just take it into the back and have our prayer and there'll be no singing of the doxology with me leading it. So let us receive our morning offering. God of awe and glory, receive these gifts as symbols of our trust in you. Bless the givers and those who desire to give. Multiply these offerings and blessings they represent. Guide the disbursement of them according to your will. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So this next song we're going to do is one of my favorites from childhood. It's a Dottie Rambo song entitled, I Go to the Rock.
Mood Swing, thank you for joining us today. Um, Don, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you want to introduce everybody? If, if you go to that, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. This is Leah, our singer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Mood Swing was with us uh, yeah, six years ago or something, something like that. And uh, Don is the only remaining one of the original group. <laughs> so uh, I want to give a little plug to them. You know, we go out sometimes to uh, like the Haciampa. They'll be playing there. Where are you playing? Uh, Back Alley Bar next weekend, and you just see them around town. They can you can go to moodswing. Moodswingnaz.com. Moodswingnaz.com if you want to follow their schedule. But We're also uh, on Facebook. ah, Facebook. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, we've tried for years to uh, you know to have groups come because when you go see them in some of these venues they have to perform in. Oh, it's like the size of uh, maybe this area. <laughs> and I always feel, you know, we have such a wonderful acoustic uh, sanctuary, so it's good to hear them in a bigger place and give you a chance to, to play in a bigger place. So thank you all for coming on this uh, Jazz Sunday. <clears throat> so we invite you next door for a time of fellowship uh, and... Uh, Thank you all for coming. May we go forth with the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.